All this week, we've been checking in on people whose stories we've shared with you in recent years, and we've been asking them the same question. How are you now? We first introduced you to Claudette Colvin last year. As a teenager, she was arrested in 1955 for telling a white lady she would not give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus. Sound familiar? Well, that act of defiance was nine months before Rosa Parks did the same thing in what became a turning point in the civil rights movement. Colvin's struggles have long been overshadowed, but she is now starting to get some long overdue recognition. Needing assistance now. It's very nice to meet you. Claudette Colvin has spent most of her 82 years as a convicted juvenile delinquent who would go on to college, work as a nurse's aide, and raise two sons. Do you think of yourself as an important figure in history? No, I think of myself as a survival of the civil rights struggle. Her place in the civil rights struggle began when she was 15 years old at the back of a crowded Montgomery, Alabama bus after school with three friends. I was sitting in the session that was allowed for uh, colored people and this white lady came. The bus driver demanded for the four seats. And this is you and three others? Students, yes. So three of them got up? Yes. And you refused? So I refused. Because this wasn't an elderly white lady, this was a young white lady. Now that happened nine months before Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a Montgomery bus, overshadowing for decades what a teenager had also done. And the traffic patrolman came to the rear of the bus and he asked me why I wasn't sitting there. I told him I was sitting there because I paid my fare and it's my constitutional rights. Now watching this interview from a nearby room was Judge Calvin Williams. Today he is the presiding judge of the Montgomery Family Court. And then what happened? Oh, lo and behold, two squad car patrolmen stopped and, you know, cut the bus off and came, they stopped and we said, oh my. We invited the judge to listen in and hear Colvin's account of what the police did to her in 1955. And he asked me why I wasn't sitting there. And I was even more defiant. And I said, I paid my fare and it's my constitutional rights. He said, constitutional rights? And all I know. And they put me in the squad car and they handcuffed me through the window. Claudette Colvin was jailed, charged with disturbing the peace, breaking segregation law, and found guilty of assaulting police officers. They said I clawed the, the policemen and I kicked the police. I didn't do all of that. Was it the one and only time in your life that you've gone to jail? Yes. At the age of 16, she made headlines again as one of four plaintiffs in the lawsuit that would end Alabama's bus segregation in the landmark Browder versus Gale Supreme Court decision. But the charge of assaulting police officers remained. Fast forward to today, when Judge Calvin Williams in Montgomery, Alabama read her appeal, he expunged her 66-year-old criminal record. And I'm no longer a juvenile delinquent at 82. She was not present when the judge ruled. She didn't know his name. She didn't even know what he looked like. We have a surprise. You have a surprise? We have a surprise for you. What is a surprise? Someone would like to meet you. Hello, Ms. Colvin, <laughs> Judge Calvin Williams. Wow, 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 wow. Judge Calvin Williams. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. oh, my goodness. On behalf of myself and all of the judges of Montgomery, offer my apology for an injustice oh. that was perpetrated upon you. Oh, this is a surprise. That was eight months ago. How are you now? I'm doing good. I heard the Vice President of the United States called you, Miss Claudette. Yes. Miss Colvin, it's Kamala Harris. How are you? You are such a role model of how at every phase of life, every stage of life, we can be leaders in a way that, like you, make history at such an early stage of life. And I think that's so critically important to inspire our young leaders to, to have the courage to see 
how they can actually change history. Oh, thank you, thank you. I wish I was there to give you a big hug. There is more good news for Miss Claudette, and it includes actress Sanaya Sidney. I heard that they're making a movie about you and your story. Yes, this in progress. Well, Miss Claudette, I got one more surprise for you. Look who's here with me. This is Sanaya. Hi, Miss Coburn. Miss Claudette, what do you want to say to this young woman who will now honor you as she plays you in the movie? Well, I'm glad that she's as beautiful as she is. And I'm so <laughs> proud of you to take time to do a very serious movie. Of course, I'm honored to tell your story, and I'm just honored to be able to show the world who you were and what you did for us and the change you did. You were the first. Why did you want to take it? Well, I was so moved at how she was just a 15-year-old girl, mm -hmm. and she had the power to create great change. Mm -hmm. And it meant so much to me, because I'm 15. Now, Miss Colvin was not shy about offering some theatrical coaching. I want that role to you to show the passion when I testified in that courtroom amongst those segregationist judges. I want you to have the passion and bring out the fire. I want you to feel the spirit. Yes. I want you to feel it. Get that passion to say, I am an American and this is my constitutional rights that I stood up for. Yes, <laughs> I promise you have my word. And again, listening on the other end, Judge Calvin Williams. What has transpired for you since we met you? Well, got a lot of uh, recognition, calls from throughout the, the country. It included this message from a viewer in Alabama. The graciousness, the intellect, the outright deep compassion that he showed Ms. Colvin touched my heart and I'm sitting here crying. Judge, you were such a change agent. And I remember, Judge, when you sat down on the side of Miss Claudette. Hello, Miss Colvin. And she had a recognition that you were African American. I think the moment meant even more to her. Did you feel that sitting on the side of her? I did. How would you phrase what that moment meant to you? I'm a beneficiary of what she did by not giving up her seat and really sparking a movement that has benefited me all of these years later in so many ways. And, and most importantly, as a judge, an African-American judge, that could eventually right or wrong that was perpetrated of, uh, upon her. That is very significant to me. Oh. Miss Claudette. It was an amazing story. I mean, listen, when you hear that man call the voicemail of the judge and say, I am sitting at home crying, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. watching you do for this elder, right? What you grew up learning only in history books. Uh, and let me tell you, friends, to sit there as a white man and witness history happening in front of you mm -hmm. yeah, was emotional. Mm -hmm. It's important, to, I mean, this is what an amazing American life that Ms. Colvin's had, right? To, to, to be alive at a time when the law says you have to give up your seat, yeah. hmm. and then that same lifetime to include that judge getting to where he is and the first black vice president, first black president, a I mean, young just actress an, portraying. A young actress portraying. I mean, it's just, it's, we always talk about some of these things. People want to think that they're the past, but they're not. These no, lives so continue good. on. Mm. It's, and that's profound to think about. She said, I hope I just live long enough to see the movie. Oh. How about that? And, and, and we, pray you, we pray you do, Miss Claudette. Yeah.